Okay, let's turn to the new C-frame nut welding machine with NIMAC nut feeding and NIMAC nut monitoring. And I would like to hand over to Mr. Seeburger. Thank you. Projection welding was already explained by Dr. Hammer, but uh, I would like to show you a projection welding machine and its components. As you can see, you have a C-frame projection welding machine, which is a product from components of Tunkers Engineering, the modular kit from forming technology as well as welding and bonding technology from NIMAC. The result is a very clean and lean design. It's highly accessible for all main components and it's highly adaptable to our customer requirements and customer applications in the field. Furthermore, naturally, we have, of course, focused on cost and performance data and parameters, and we have been using them in an optimal way. We've got the following assemblies here. We've got the MF uh, welding transformer, a NIMAC product with a short distance, provides a welding current to the electrode. We've got the Tunkers multi-force cylinder, which allows us to, us to have high welding forces with very low air consumption. Furthermore, we have a pneumatic unit, which has now reached performance level D cooling water distribution with the individual cooling separates in separate control as well as a flow-through measurement. Furthermore, NIMAC feeding unit, and last but not least, the Tonkers C-frame from the um, reforming technology modular kit. Now, on the process, each welding process in nut welding starts with a feeding of the nut. The automatic feeding unit, which is a NIMAC product, is now used. The nut is put into a rotation feeder, is put into the right position. Then we have a compressed air system, which goes right into the nut bracket and then is fed into the system. This feeding, however, can be a problem outside in the field in operations. As we know, there's no such thing as a 100% solution. And for this case, we have the lower electrode with a monitoring system where we have different features that we can monitor, such as no nut, no sheet metal, or not in a wrong position. And I'll show this to you now. In the first case, we simulate the component with these blanks, and I want to now simulate that there is no nut in the feeder. You can see that the system has detected that the overall height is not in line with the default value. This is why the process is interrupted. So you don't have an erroneous welding and the failure rate also goes down. The second uh, possibility is that you do have a nut, but maybe the handling robot lost the component on its way to the machine. Once again, it's being detected that the component is missing. The process is interrupted and an operator must look at the system and must do some troubleshooting. And as the final possibility, we have this here. The nut is put on its head in the wrong position. Once again, the system detects it and thus sends a warning, an error message to the controller. Right, and now I would like to show you a well-functioning process in its completeness. Okay, what uh, made I, what mistake made I made? Okay, the sheet metal is not there, so open the system, please. I must correct this. Okay, let's try again. And you can see 
it's really an, an, uh, a, a functioning system. This is the complete process now, the real life process. Another feature that we've got is that we have the bottommost electrode with a retractable pin which is PLC controlled and can be retracted at the end of the process. The benefit is that when we have welding spatter, for example, or other contamination, the pin will be glued to the component. The pin is not destroyed when you retract the system. So if the pin is locked and the retract position is not reached, the system will go to fault again, alarm message, alarm error message, and the operator must go and have a look. Of course, this is very decisive for the cost of the system because we can maintain the pins.